History of my oldest ancestors of whom I am very proud descend. October 27, 939. Is crowned, Edmund I, the Old, King of the Saxons, King of England, my 36th grandfather, three times my grandfather, 10th grandfather of Dom Afonso III, King of Portugal, my 25th and 26th grandfather. Edmund I, the Old, King of the Saxons, King of England was born in 921, and died at Pucklechurch, May 26, 946, was the son of Edward, the Old, King of Wessex, and a jiver of Kent, paternal grandson of Alfred the Great, King of Wessex, and Ellisvite, and maternal grandson of Ethelhelm of Wessex, Archbishop of Canterbury and Elswether. Edmund I, also called Edmund, the Elder, the Just War, the Magnificent, was King of the Saxons and England between October 27, 939 and 946, succeeding his older half-brother, E. Telstano. Life? Edmund was the son of King Edward the Elder and his third wife, Queen Edgiver of Kent, and grandson of King Alfred the Great. After Edward died in 924, he was succeeded by his eldest son, Edmund's half-brother Ethelston. Edmund was crowned after Ethelston died childless on October 27, 939. Edmund had two sons, Edwin and Edgar, by his first wife St. Elgiver of Shaftesbury, my 36th grandmother, thrice my grandmother, and none by his second wife Aethel Philede. His sons were children when he was murdered in a fight by an outlaw, at Pucklechurch, Gloucestershire, and was succeeded by his younger brother Edred, who died in 955. Ethelston succeeded as King of the Saxons south of the Humber and became the first king of all England when he conquered Viking ruled York in 927, but after his death, Anlaf Guthfrithson was considered King of York and extended Viking rule to the five regions. From Northeast Mercia, Edmund was initially forced to accept the reversal, the first major setback the Kingdom of Wessex dynasty had suffered since Alfred's reign, but he was able to regain his position after Anlaf's death in 941. In 942 Edmund regained control of the five regions and in 944 he regained control of all of England when he expelled the Viking kings from York. Edred had to deal with further revolts when he became king, and York was not conquered until 954. Ethelston achieved a dominant position over other British kings and Edmund maintained his territory, perhaps beyond Scotland. The northern Welsh king Idwal Fole may have sided with the Vikings when he was killed by the English in 942. The British Kingdom of Strathclyde may also have sided with the Vikings when Edmund ravaged it in 945 and then gave it to Malcolm I, King of Scotland. Edmund continued his brother's friendly relations with continental rulers, several of whom were married to his half-sisters. Edmund inherited his brother's interests and chief advisers, such as Oda, whom he appointed Archbishop of Canterbury in 941, Ethelston half-king, Alderman, and Aelfia the Bald, Bishop of Winchester. Government at the local level was exercised mainly by aldermen, and Edmund made substantial changes during his reign, with a shift from Ethelston's main dependence on the West Saxons to a greater prominence of men with Mercian connections. Unlike the close relatives of previous kings, his mother and brother attested many of Edmund's letters, suggesting a high degree of family cooperation. Edmund was also an active legislator, and three of his codes survive. Provisions include those that attempt to regulate feuds and emphasize the sanctity of the royal person. The major religious movement of the 10th century, the English Benedictine Reformation, reached its height under Edgar, but Edmund's reign was important in its beginnings. He appointed Dunstan Abbot of Glastonbury, where A. Ethelwold joined him. They would be two of the leaders of the reform and made the abbey the first important center for its dissemination. Unlike his son Edgar's circle, Edmund did not consider Benedictine monasticism to be the only worthy religious life and also patronized unreformed, non-Benedictine, establishments. Death and Succession On May 26, 946, Edmund was killed in a fight at Pucklechurch, in Gloucestershire. According to the post-conquest chronicler John of Worcester, while the glorious Edmund I, King of the Saxons, was in the royal town called Pucklechurch, trying to save his butler from the attack of a wicked thief, he kills Edmund, on the Feast of St. Augustine, on a Tuesday May 26, when completed five years and seven months of reign. Edmund I, King of the Saxons was taken to Glastonbury and buried by the abbot, St. Dunstan. 
historians Claire Downham and Kevin Halloran reject John of Worcester's account and suggest that the king was the victim of political assassination, but this view has not been accepted by other historians. Like his son Edgar 30 years later, Edmund was buried in Glastonbury Abbey. The location may have reflected his spiritual prestige and royal endorsement of the monastic reform movement, but as his death was unexpected it is more likely that Dunstan was able to claim the body. His sons were still children when he was succeeded as king by his brother Edred, who in turn was succeeded by Edmund's eldest son Edwin. Family and descent From the marriage of Edmund I, King of the Saxons to St. Elgiver of Shaftesbury, my 36th grandmother, three times my grandmother, were born. Eduino. Edgar, the peaceful, King of the Saxons, King of England, my 35th grandfather, three times my grandfather, married Ethelfleda, and then married Ilfrida of Devon, my 35th grandmother, three times my grandmother, 